Greetings and salutations, dears. I'm Star Princess A. Chelsea, and welcome back to Subutears, possibly the last, or at least close to the last episode, I believe. Uh, last time, we finally talked to Lillian and uh, confessed our feelings for her, or don't confess your feelings, but it doesn't really change much, because either way, she's dating Lucas now, and pretty much, we've been friend-zoned, so... I guess uh, all that's left to do is talk to Myra and see what happens, so... Here we go! When I was a kid, I wondered how dreams worked. And this was before I knew about science and religion and any of that fancy stuff. Kids think solely with intuition. And candy. I thought back then that dreams were mirrors. I thought they were special mirrors that showed you what your eyes couldn't see. We like to think that we understand ourselves, but there are things only visible to the outside. And as it turns out, the heart is more transparent than you'd think. Fourteen days. I count the number one by one on my fingers until I reach ten and cycle around, tracing the time that's passed since I, oh, excuse me, since I first met Myra. I must have always known on some level. Lillian never acted that way around me. I tried to see it, but it was never really there. And Lucas, he's the one who invited her to our science project group. He's the one who said she might be his type, even if he was kidding. You could see it in the way he handled her, or handed her stuff. You can always, always read someone's heart by looking at the way they hand out rulers and erasers and calculators. Uh, sure. Let's go with that. They always avoid touching fingers. Well, maybe they're a germaphobe. You don't know. Maybe they're afraid of getting all icky. I mean, have you not dissected a frog before? They're kind of gross. Well, aren't I Captain Hindsight? Aye, aye, Captain. I try to open my eyes, but they refuse. The sunlight wafts through my eyelids. Oh, right. The bookmark. I had almost forgotten. It was from last spring. Our local bookstore held a short story contest for publicity, and Lucas wanted to help out. But being more of an artist than a writer, and not having enough story material for a cover page, he made an abstract design for a bookmark as a present. Maybe he went through a few drafts along the way and kept an extra for himself. Either way, I'm only guessing. The topic barely came up in the group. Maybe it was embarrassing for both of them, even back then. A final chuckle surfaces on my lips. Of course it was embarrassing. Of course! Things were set in motion long, long ago. A world frozen still. A scarlet sun. That I'll, I'll never forget. She shakes her head. Sorry. I'm sorry, but there's already someone that I like. And then she walked away. Simple as that. But kind of think of it, there's a piece of the story that slipped my mind, back when I was trying not to think about it. A few seconds after she passed by me, the red ribbon she wore in her hair drifted down to my hands. But I don't remember what I did with it. She must have gone looking for it and picked it up. I was too broken to care. That's it. That's the whole story. That girl does look a lot like Myra. It's unlikely, but could they be... It would make sense, wouldn't it? The girl I fell for didn't know me well, but she could certainly dig up personal info if she wanted to. Maybe she's just toying with her ex-admirer's heart. No. No, no, no. She wouldn't lie. She wouldn't. Well, then why hasn't she told me who she is? Screw it. As far as I know, Myra's connection to that memory only goes as far as the ribbon. And surely the manufacturer produced more than one. I've got a job to do today, and I'm sure as hell going to do it. What are we going to do, Mark? There goes. I pull open the blinds. Oh, okay. I was afraid he was gonna jump out the window because it's like, my Lillian does not love me. 
She loves my creepy friend. The sun is shining, and the icy air wipes away my anxiety. It looks like the back door is propped open by a piece of wood. I check my watch. 8.58. Hello. I was waiting. Hey. I'm glad you came. Did you really think I wouldn't? Of course not. Shall we get out of here? Sounds like a plan. You lead the way. Hmm. Now this is a change of pace. I don't mind taking the lead, but I have no idea where to go. Uh, I'm not sure how to say this, but... You've never been on a date before, have you? So blunt. It's alright. This is my first time, too. We'll figure it out as we go along. Her smile is reassuring. Alright then. I don't know where we're going, but let's go. Gotcha. My cheeks turn red already. Boy, you got over your heartbreak quickly, didn't you, Mark? We arrived downtown, and I realized that I don't know which direction to walk in. You're not the improv type, are you? Couldn't you tell that but just by looking at me? Oh, whoops. You're right. You weren't supposed to agree. You're supposed to make me feel better. I don't know. Well, huh. I don't know. Wanna go to a... I stutter with embarrassment. What was that? Um, uh, um, hey, stop looking at me like that. This is harder than it looks. Oh, really? I thought guys always talk about clever pickup lines. You haven't met too many guys then, have you? Well, those aren't just jokes. Normal pickup lines are a million times harder. And they don't always work. Besides, easy for you to say. You're confident around me, but you'd react the same way if you were talking to a guy you know. <laughs> Suddenly horn, thanks. A timely car horn conceals my words, luckily. Anyway, not everyone is as comfortable with the opposite sex as you are. <laughs> Join the club. I think all of us are kind of awkward around people we're attracted to, just saying. You know, I wasn't always like this. Really? Yeah, definitely. I used to be really shy around boys, and I'd always hide behind my glasses when someone tried to make eye contact. This is the wrong time to be imagining her with glasses, but I can't help it. Is it bad that I'm thinking that her glasses are the same color of her, as her hair? Or maybe her ribbon? I guess you've grown up, then. No, not really. I think I'm only like this around you. That's... wait, what? Because you're just so easy to tease, see? Okay, that's it. We're going to see the most gory horror movie in the theater. You won't even be able to speak. And then you're gonna have to be forced to cuddle with me because you're a scaredy poopy head. Oh, that's what you were trying to say before? Uh... I... well, I mean... it's what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah, but it's a bit too plain, if you ask me. Movies are said to be the ideal date spot, but I don't get it. Yeah, I kinda, do, I kinda have to agree with Myra on this one. It's like, you're gonna be spending more time watching the film than you are talking to your dates. Isn't the whole point of a date is to get to know each other and form a bond of some kind? Seems kind of... Mixed feelings on that, where it's like you're, you're focusing more on the screen than you are them. So, like, wouldn't it make more sense to like look around a festival of some kind or an aquarium? Yeah, something where you two can talk and get to know each other. I'm just saying. Aren't you supposed to actually watch the movie? Thank you. I know. It's pointless, right? I mean, it's a waste of a good movie to watch it when you're not focused. And, and if it's not a good movie, it won't even be fun. Unless you're just sitting in the back, uh, Mystery Science theatering it up. And it's not like the girl will actually fall asleep on your shoulder if it's boring. If anything, it'll just make the conversation awkward after it. Be like, why the hell did I pick this? Um, I'm not sure if I want to answer this question, but why do you know all this? 
Does he read teen magazines about girl getting and such? So yeah, let's keep walking and see what comes up. Yeah, let's do that. So is, so is there anything you want to buy? Like what? I don't know, I'm asking you. Did you already buy Christmas presents for everyone? Uh, That's right. Christmas presents. You forgot, didn't you? No, I was going to go out, but then something happened and I... Has anyone ever told you that you're a terrible liar? No, I actually thought I was a great liar. Hmm. I guess I'm special then. Ha 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 ha. You like my crappy laugh? Ha 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 ha. Sorry, but you're hilarious when you're nervous. Take my word for it, you're a terrible liar. Ah, Mark. Shouting my name isn't going to make me believe you. Just don't try to become a spy, alright? I need to see what happens if you get caught. First of all, what makes you think I would get caught? Touche. I mean, she does jump out windows and such. Don't forget, I'm more fit than I look. True, but athletics can only save you if you don't get tricked. I'm not half as gullible as you. And the moment they lure you in, trap! And net falls from the ceiling and the guards surround you. Well, I could just cut the rope with my daggers and escape into the shadows. I've got a spy carries a dagger with them. The best kind, come on. Hmm. A ninja spy? I told you she's a ninja! I told you she's a ninja! <laughs> I... huh. Wow. Alright, I don't have a comeback for that. That's okay. I'm sure I'll say something equally incomprehensible soon. That's reassuring. Ooh, look at this one. It's even shinier than the last one. Even a crow wouldn't get this distracted looking at jewelry. Yeah, they'd probably be like, Yeah, this is kind of boring. I'm gonna go visit my relatives. And then I'm gonna go beat up that guy who was wearing a bunny rabbit mask later on. Cause they remember that stuff. Crows are tricky. You gotta watch them. They are tricky. But it's not my fault if they're shiny. <sighs> I guess I should just leave her be. Ah, look, look! I'm looking, but all I see is shiny metal. But it's shiny! <laughs> oh my god! I wonder if she suffers from, uh, um... Attention deficit- ooh, shiny! Myra points to a necklace that looks the same as every other one. Don't take this the wrong way, but do all girls act like this around jewelry? I don't. Unless it's dragons. Then you probably can't yank me away. But I don't get this excited. I'm not like, ooh, shiny, ooh, shiny, ooh, shiny. I'm more like, ooh, dragon, ooh, dragon, ooh, dragon. And then be like, eh, it's not that nice looking. Well, most would use a wider variety of adjectives. But come on, don't any of them look pretty to you? I'm sure your aesthetic sense isn't that underdeveloped. Try as I might, all I am seeing is a collection of stones. But if I imagined her wearing one of them... Oh boy. Thinking about something dirty? True, he was thinking about her jewelry. Didn't say he was thinking about her wearing anything but jewelry. Uh, what, what makes you think that? Okay, fine, but it's nothing that bad. I was just kind of having a titanic moment. I just imagine you wearing one of these, that's all. Ah. I didn't think you'd actually say it. Do I really seem that spineless? Yeah, you do. Sorta. That's not always true. You, you'd look cute with one of these. Hey, what's with the sudden confidence boost? That shouldn't be a bad thing. Nah, no, it's fine. It's just... Ah, never mind. She isn't the only one who's blushing. Uh, did you want to try it on? You sure? Well, why not? Not that I can afford something like this, but... Thanks, I'll give it a try. Well, she's got a rich uncle, right? Maybe she he could buy it for her. So what do you think? 
Mara pulls on a simple but elegant necklace, posing like a model. Hmm, maybe this one would be better. This time she tries a less formal design. I know we agree not to talk about price, but the more I look at it, the more it hurts me to know that in a few moments you won't be wearing it anymore. Or, I mean, because you look so happy trying it on, I don't want... Thanks. She stops me from stuttering. For what it's worth, it really does look good on you. She does a little twirl in place. I like it. My mom has a similar one stored away. She said she wore it a lot in college. It's subtle, but it looks good. Can we see it? Hello, game? I can't decide if I can't see it. You know, in a non-elegant sort of way. Kind of starshly plain with an air of childishness. That uh, sounded better in my head. Yeah, she's you're basically calling her a child. I think I know what you're trying to say. Uh, see, you guys are good for each other just because she can interpret your insanity. Good, because I barely know what I was trying to say. I know that I meant what I meant. I meant it though. It's fancy, but not too fancy. It has a feminine appeal that suits you. Um, you think I have a feminine appeal? No, not that. What? What's wrong with being feminine? I reply automatically. I mean, the necklace is feminine, and... So, you don't think I have a feminine appeal? Oh, now you're done for! Now you're in for it, Mark! No, it's, it's not that either, but... <laughs> you like my weird laugh? Gotcha. Uh, let's go. In a hurried and ineffective attempt to escape my embarrassment, I grab her hand and pull her outside. Just where do you plan on going, Mr. Stylishly Plain? Somewhere I won't have to suffer this kind of abuse. Yeah, good luck with that. Sorry about all that. Don't worry about it. I'm the one who should be apologizing. I wish I could have bought it for you, but... Forget it. Window shopping is a better date activity than regular shopping anyway. True, that way you're not uh, losing your money in this. Where it's like, oh, this is so nice. And then he's looking it's like, yep, I'm gonna have to work overtime. I mean, it's... She's interrupted by the growl of a stomach. Hers, to be precise. I wonder what that could mean. I think it was a train? A... a... growling train? Maybe it's the cat bus from my neighbor Totoro. That... that... that's around here, right? That, that's a true story, right? My neighbor Totoro? It, it's based off of a true story. There's actually cat buses, right? Okay, fine, you win. Can we eat? Only if you really want to. I think her stomach does. <sighs> Especially since it sounds like it can't wait any longer. I guess she can't argue when she knows I'm paying. Why don't you split the bill? I think that would be easier and nicer. Time flew by quickly after that. I tried not to think too hard about what that meant. What we were being led toward. But I failed. Obviously. I'm tired. We've been on our feet for most of the day. Wanna go rest somewhere to rest? Yeah, I think so. There's a nice city park somewhere around here. Come on, let's go sit down. Hmm. It's a nice evening. You're right. We sit side by side on a freezing cold bench. The sunset poking at my peripheral vision. The air is heavy, heavier even than in my dreams. Myra's hand rests on the bench an inch from mine. Her fingers twitch from time to time, but they don't reach out. Neither do mine. There's no turning back from here, is there? There is no turning back from the moment we met. Well, either way, it's certainly too late now. I pause before every sentence. I have to push the words out. Memories don't vanish, you know. They fade, but they don't vanish. They're a weight. They aren't always a weight. I know. They're not all bad. But you can't get rid of them. Good or bad, they end up in the same place. 
in your head. What do you think happens when you take a good memory of someone and turn it into something bad? What do you think's going to be left over? I'm sorry to drag you into this, Mark. That is not your fault. You can't even begin to imagine. I glanced sideways at her, sun in her hair. You remember, right? You remember when I asked you to stay with me until you regained your memories? Yeah. She smiles vaguely at the distance. I hadn't thought of what that would entail. I hadn't thought of anything. I'm sorry. I've been selfish. I shouldn't have made you think about her. No, don't say that. How can I not say that? I didn't tell you anything. I dragged you around, played with your head. You put up with me even though I'm like a stranger to you. You can call yourself, if you call yourself a stranger, then I'd hate to see what you'd call my classmates. What? I mean, I mean you can't just decide by yourself that your actions were selfish. There are two parts to that judgment, right? If the person you are being selfish toward doesn't think you are being selfish, then... But... What I mean is, you're not a stranger to me. That isn't your decision to make. Don't call yourself a stranger. You're not kidding. Of course not. Come on. Do you really think I'd be here if I didn't act care about you? I woke up at 8 a.m. Do you know how hard it is for you to do that? 8 a.m. Dude, I'm, I'm usually the 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock guy. Come on. That's... Redness surges through Myra's cheeks. You're important to me, so it goes out saying that it hurt me if you left. I'm sorry. You don't have to. I'm sorry. She hides behind her hands. I... I made a mistake. I'm sorry. All I wanted was something simple. Something simple. Something so, so simple. But I... Her hair covers her face, and I feel a faint trembling through the air. You're being too hard on yourself. I told you, you didn't hurt me. But... No buts. It doesn't matter. I made... I made a mistake, Mark. I told you, it's... It's not alright. Her trembling body comes to a halt. You're a good person, just like I remember. You're a good person, but I... Tell me, then. Tell me why you came here. I just wanted to see if my scars were gone. A sharp wind whistles through the empty park. And did you find your answer? Yeah. Yeah, I think I did. It's cold. Her hand is cold in mine, but it'll warm in time. It's getting dark. Clouds are beginning to gather behind the sun's trail. Looks like we're in for a white Christmas. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. It wasn't this year, though! At least where I was, it wasn't. You're right. It'll be midnight soon. Let's go. It's the night of the 24th. People must be all over the city square by now. Are you implying what I think you're implying? I'm implying that I'm going to hate myself if we don't do this properly. You're not the only one. She grabs my hand and follows along. It's beautiful. There's something odd about going on a date with inevitable tragedy hanging above you. Every time I catch my breath, I feel sinking in my chest as I remember that this isn't just another day. The trick, I've realized, is not to give yourself time to catch your breath. You had never been here before? Only a couple times during the day. I was always home with my parents on Christmas Eve. Well, it probably wouldn't surprise you to know that this is my first time, too. That's a little comforting. It sure is crowded, isn't it? I think it's the good kind of crowded. It's hard to imagine that I've been missing out on this for my entire life. It's not too late for us to start. Your hand is warm. Actually, your hand is cold. You really aren't built for winter, are you? That was a poorly timed joke. Truth be told, the softness of her fingers and the warmth of her palm is enough to drive away the December wind. 
but I don't think I could say that out loud. Well, I figured you'd know what I meant anyway. Good point. Uh, sorry to drag you out to dra have to drag you out like this. It would have been better if we had met in the middle of summer, huh? It's fine. I wasn't kidding when I said your hand was warm. Really? Really. Try it sometime. I think you're just saying that because your hands are freezing. Well, excuse me for not bringing gloves. Besides, if we met in the summer, it wouldn't be snowing like this. Now that you mention it... The snow drifts down. How timely! Yeah, it's almost like that was programmed into it. Weird! I used to love the winter back when I lived here. And I take it you still do? Of course. The tiny white droplets gather on her hair, endearingly messy. Do you want to go skating? Huh? Well, I suppose we could, but... Don't tell me. No, I definitely know how to skate. I just... Liar. Fine, you win. I can teach you if you want. Would you really? Sure. It'll take more than one night to learn, but I'm sure you'll get the basics down after a few falls. You mean I still have to fall? Too late. I've already decided. I'm pretty sure you're going to fall anyway. Unless you've got a really good teacher who's going to catch you all the time. It's been a while since I've gone skating. The wind in your hair, the ice gliding beneath your feet, have both been completely removed from the equation. Ah, slow down! If I slow down anymore, that earthworm by the bench might beat us. There aren't any earthworms in the winter. Duh! Be careful. Shout too much and you might fall. Oop, there she goes. Hey, you almost pulled me down as well. That's a small price to pay if I don't have to fall. <laughs> I push my skates back with just enough force to propel us forward. Ah, don't move without warning me first. Because clearly you're in a position to give orders. I love this feeling. You know, you're really not going to learn anything if we keep going at this speed. This is fast enough, thank you. Wah! This time I grab onto Mara's arm before she falls, almost losing my balance in the process. Just take it slow at first. You'll get used to it. That's what I'm trying to do, but you keep speeding up. This isn't what a legally sane person would call fast. Looking at the ice, I begin to wonder if we're not just standing still and deluding ourselves into thinking we're moving. When I said take it slow, I meant in relation to a normal skating speed. First, I need to figure out how to stand on these things. Why are skates so thin? Myra stops, attempts to realign her center of balance, and starts gliding again. Slowly. Very slowly. Uh... <laughs> Ugh, whose great idea was this anyway? Humans weren't meant to travel on thin little slivers of metal. Okay, let's take a deep breath and start from the beginning. First, stand still. Okay, I think I can do this. What's next? Now stand there for a few more seconds. That was a deadly glare. Maybe this isn't the best time for sarcasm. Okay, okay, you can stop standing there. Now try moving slowly. Uh... It's working? I don't know. I Honestly, I have not ice skated since I was a kid. I wasn't very good at it, so... I would definitely need lessons. Good. Just try to keep your balance and don't speed up. I'll be right here if you need me. This isn't bad. Ah! That looked painful. What happened to being there if I need you? Uh... I may have been engaging in some form of mental narration and lost track of time. I gotta talk to the audience, remember? This isn't exactly, uh, just real life. This is a game. Anyway, that wasn't bad. You made it a lot farther than last time. Alright, wanna try again? I'll stay with you this time. If you don't, you're... If you don't, you're going to regret it. Okay, I'll start first. Slowly... Slowly but surely. This might be a big step for you, but do you want to try turning? One direction is more than enough for now. I see. Having said that, if you look straight ahead, you'll see that you don't have much of a choice. Huh? Oh. Ow! I rush in front of her and pull her away from the wall. 
Or at least I try to until the sudden movement makes me lose balance. Ow. I landed on my keys. Don't owl me. You grabbed me as you were falling. Okay, fine. I won't deny that. Although I would if I could. You're lucky I'm too numb from the wind to feel anything. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. We struggle for a few seconds to help each other up. You know, I think I have a better idea. A pair of arms wrap themselves around mine. Guide me. What? I said guide me. What? Did I slur? I heard you, but isn't it more fun this way? I suppose that's one solution. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why not? But I think this is probably a good place to stop for now, just because that was kind of sweet with the ice skating thing. I guess we'll probably finish it up, uh, hopefully in the next video, see what's going to happen on their little date. But for now, this is Star Princess HLC saying thank you very much for watching, and have a fond farewell.